God bless you saints. This is Sean here. I just want to say, you know, happy Thanksgiving. And, you know, I'm not... There's some of these celebrations, you know, I don't exactly like Christmas and everything. Don't celebrate, you know. And there's some dark history about, you know, how Thanksgiving happened and different things. But, you know, being thankful and being with your family and eating, you know, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. But I do want to say, guys... Uh, you know, I mentioned, I, we've been talking about, you know, my past videos of fear of the Lord and everything and forgiving. And it's important for us to have, I don't mean like where you feel like oppressed and you don't trust the Lord and you feel like uh, any second you're going to be knocked off by God. I'm not talking about that. When I say the fear of the Lord, I mean you, like Moses, you know, in the burning bush and, and, and there was that respect for the Lord that he was an awesome God and and they trembled and and you know he learned you know there's a lot of time when when they built the golden calf and they were doing those things you know and he broke the stones but it said that he fasted for an entire 40 days a uh, 40 days for the people that they'd not be cut off guys that's that's some love right there Sometimes when we, we were, like I said, when we're carrying this anger or this bitterness, when we're carrying it, when we're projecting it on people, guys, it'll take away that sweetness that you have. I, it'll take away that. And one of the doctrines that we've been taught, and I'd been taught it before, you know, and I'm not back, I'm not like being harsh at anybody or anything who has any of those doctrines. So don't get that picture. But one of the doctrines I was taught was, you know, it's sort of like the once saved, always saved, you know, we know that's false, but I was taught the, uh, you know, Christ forgave your past, present, and future sins, and I, I'm saying this with trembling, because I'm not accusing people, because we're all on different, you know, not all of us agree on the same thing, but Yeshua, you, you know, asked him uh, a while back about certain things, and, and, he, and he said, you know, you know, am I, I said, am I going to lose my life in this whole, you know, this whole Elijah thing, you know, because I was worried that, you know, in the future I might fall or whatever. And he said, only the father knows who's going to sin against him. He said, only the father knows. And, and that, that was news to me because I didn't know that, you know, they say Yeshua, you know knows everything but you know he even says he doesn't know when he's returning only the father knows well he took it a step further says i don't know you know only the father knows because when he came down to earth and he was incarnated in the flesh he became like us you know he has faith that we're going to do our race and everything and and the, from time to time he explained to me the father will show him things that he needs to know to tell us and so he'll know a lot of things ahead of time because the father tells him but he doesn't tell him everything because he has a he has a ministry. And a lot of times people want guarantees that God is going to forgive them tomorrow. But guys, we are told that tomorrow is not guaranteed. We're not guaranteed that we'll have a chance to repent tomorrow. We're only guaranteed, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. I can't find any, you know, scripture where God guarantees that tomorrow's sins or something happening tomorrow will be forgiven but you know he he told me he said they have to repent today sean they don't have tomorrow and and part of the fear of the lord guys is when you when you think like this if you think you're going to automatically be forgiven no matter what you do you could do a lot of uh you know you could do a lot of bad things to people and and just think it's okay because god you know forgives me a future as long as i'm in the moment you know he understands that in the moment i'm gonna fall sometimes but that's when I was in heaven and I kept trying to explain how we're going to fall sometimes. And I saw the Father. The Father, God the Father is gigantic. He didn't move an inch. And then I was thinking, he's not even giving me any wiggle room. What is this? And then, and then because he wasn't doing that, it even made me even more fearful to where the temptation to sin was right there. Like I was going to do it right then. And he looked really close at my face like, are you serious? Are you going to really do that? And then he told me, I want my people to walk by faith. They need to learn to live by faith. A lot of times when I strategize to them moving forward, not to do a sin again, 
they get afraid they get afraid that i'm putting too much on them and they say you know you know the lord's way is not equal you know you're putting too much on us but he says he'll never put too much on us we can bear and with the temptation he'll provide a, a way of escape and he says we can do all things through christ who strengthens us but a lot of times we look at how we are in our flesh apart from christ's strength and we say surely he's going to allow some wiggle room but he's not like a uh he's not like a uh you know like a drill sergeant just you know what i mean where you can't even like you know breathe i'm not i'm not talking about that i'm talking about you know the lord in his sweetness given us his grace is is to learn to walk in perfection like him he said you should you shall be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect but he remember he gave a comment to a man who basically said when he returned i knew lord you were a hard man in other words uh you know your way you know you're calling people to be perfect or or you're calling people yeah he said i know you're a hard man lord uh, reaping where you've not sown gathering where you've not strong and he showed me this in the dream where he pretended to be uh angry and he pretended to be like a hard man and grabbing uh, a 50 and a 20 and, and that number together represents 70 like 70 years of captivity of babylon and he wasn't like really angry he was just joking he was showing how people oftentimes when he requires he calls them to do something they they treat him like he's almost like he's being like this and he just stomped his foot at an angel to his left and the angel started laughing they started laughing i mean it wasn't like an unclean laughter or i'm like i'm mocking you laughter it wasn't like a bad i mean he has such a sweet way of doing things and he was just kind of frowning but i knew he wasn't really angry and he's saying this is how they see me sean a lot of times uh when you know they're they're blasting somebody off they think i'm this harsh at them and they also they also think when i'm requiring them to repent that this is the portrayal of me that I, there can't be any way i can teach perfection basically without being like this but but it's not true you know the lord has a soft and a sweet side but oftentimes guys we get it in our head that he's putting too much on us that there's no way we can ever be perfect but in heaven guys they don't think like that they're not worried about the devils trying to get them to sin they're not worried about their flesh trying to get them to sin in heaven they're like i'm with god i'm obeying him that's they're not worried about that god wants us to live in heaven on earth right he wants this because the kingdom of god is within us we're raised up in heavenly places he wants us to live the way we are living in heaven right now you know the bible says this is the grace of god that brings salvation teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust in this present age it doesn't say like in the age to come denying them but denying them now and i know people think he's saying almost deny him but but he's he's saying deny him he wants us to take up uh our cross and walk with them but a lot of times i can hear people's anger like toward like like their hatred toward uh toward uh people you know i i saw a carnage scene and, and god gave me a dream about this also but this this cletus cassidy was beaten up on this guy and he said to eddie brock you know you printed only one side of the paper about me, only one, one side of the story, you know. You forgot to mention the part that Cletus Cassidy was abused by mommy, and daddy, and granny, and he's like screaming. And so there's this right that because we tend to have because we were abused to abuse others, you know. And, and, and I saw that Superman, God told one, one person once, you know, he's a spirit of coldness. And I saw that carnage go into him, that coldness, and uh, go into uh, Superman. And, and he was destroying, you know. And it was in the name of, they, they did this stuff to me, you know. And, and it's, we got to overcome the spirit of coldness and that spirit of carnage. And, 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 and carnage is also the spirit of lasciviousness. And it's... It, it talks about turning the grace of God into lasciviousness, you know. I'm not, like, saying it in a harsh way. I'm not doing it like... I know there's some people out there when they preach, guys, that they want to uh, slam people down, you know, and they don't want to have love toward it when they're preaching. I'm, I'm not a hard man. I told one guy once, you know, I'm not a hard man. Why are you attacking me? I'm not a hard man, you know. I'm not, like, 
angry or anything but the problem is guys you know God said there there is rebellion in people's hearts there's rebellion he told me that face to face and you know it says in the Elijah codes it said their rebellion their heart is like the rebellious of heart and it says, and, and it likened, I didn't liken to this. It says, you can look up the come near Elijah codes. You know, it talks about it. Everything I'd be dealing with. And it said the heart is like a, a bottomless pit. And you know, those locusts coming out of that pit. They're for the unclean things that come out of the heart. The, the hatred of men and the bitterness and, and the envy, you know, because, and carnage is part, partly envious because you you have the joy of the lord you have the joy of life you know i don't have that joy i was abused by my uh mother and father and, and grandma i don't have that joy that envy you know that's that's a wolverine spirit he showed me that demon wolverine of envy you know because he wanted to get uh scott summer's wife you know that he felt like he she belonged to him you know and there's I'm not I'm not doing it to judge anybody. I'm not doing it out of hate. I'm doing it because I love you guys and, and we don't need to be controlled by these things. Don't let the devil control your emotions. Don't let him control your anger. I understand that you have that pain. I understand you you were abused as a child. I understand there are many out there who need to be loved. I understand that. <laughs> but uh you know, the Lord commands us to forgive others you know and when he when he says 70 times 7 he really means it i you can tell to a certain degree who's forgiven others guys that that love will be in your voice guys that that anger won't be there he says let all bitterness and anger and wrath and, and clamor and malice be put away from you so it shouldn't even be in the tone of your voice guys we shouldn't even have it you know we shouldn't have it at all. It, does, it doesn't fit a Christian, guys. It fits the world. This is how the world uh, can deal with their problems when when they're, you know, they just feel like they have to do something. There's there's somebody I work with, and, and this is just his way that he feels like he has to uh, practice aggression and use aggression to solve the problems. Because if he's not coming down hard on people, they won't get the message. But that's not the way Christ does it. He has commands tell us to turn away from uh wickedness and he'll tell us that but he won't do it with the spirit of the world and we can be doing preaching the lord's word but we can be doing it in the wrong spirit we still have to do it in the holy spirit you see what i'm saying the word and the spirit he says eat my flesh drink my blood there are a lot of people that are preaching the flesh of the lord which is his word but they're not drinking the blood, uh, the, the spirit. They're not coming in the right spirit. There's there's animosity there. Uh, I don't consult, you know, who I've been or who I was, you know, according to the commands of God. When he tells me to, uh, when he talks to people about repent, he's not saying like halfway repent or you can never do good or you can never overcome that or you're going to always fall or you're going to always do this he, that you don't find that in the word of god but but this is just because our own fear is that we can't do these things we kind of add that and throw that into the equation but christ doesn't you know it's not in the word not because he doesn't see our uh you know doesn't see our the weakness of our flesh it, but it's because he wants to get us to where he wants to get us, you know, to that perfection. And we're called to walk perfect. It actually is a command. I know people hate that command that says be perfect as your heavenly father per is perfect. But it's in the word of God. I can't like preach. Don't be perfect. You can't be when the word of God tells me be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. I can't preach you can't do something when the word of God tells me you can do all things. I gotta preach, you know, what the word says. And I know it'll offend a lot of people if you just preach what the word says and, and you do it in the spirit of the Lord. Because, you know, people think that they make in this world and, and a lot of times in, in our holiness movement, Christianity, anger is made to look strong and, and, and bitterness and, and it's made to look like a, a virtue in the Holy Spirit. but. These are where our, our scales of our eyes need to come off, guys. We need to learn how to tell the difference between the two. But sometimes, as an angel said once to a person, he poured uh, water into clay. And it's like the water and the clay seem to mix. 
and the water is for those doctrines of the world and they can mix the clay make it muddy and you can't separate the two you need to separate the two you know the the flesh needs to be that dried up from that part of us that water those unclean doctrines you know and because they've got into our spirit they can seep in your spirit and they can kind of muddy up our understanding of the word of god you know and this is why we we need to let go of our fears a lot of times people have fears that they won't be able to do what the lord says so they say it can't be true it really can't be true god really would not be calling me to totally go and send them more this it can't be true and so that part of it is factored out but i'm telling you because of what he told me he said and i'm not saying it is like a threat to hurt anybody or anything i'm just saying he said in revelation 9 there were going to be many people going into the darkness that day that they had that doctrine of nobody's perfect and so that nobody's perfect doctrine would lead them back into that sin because when they were tempted to sin what's going to run through their mind uh is it going to be i can do all things through christ who strengthens me be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect or nobody's perfect go ahead and do it this time nobody's perfect christ forgives your uh future sins they in their weakness i'm not saying they don't have good intentions but they in their weakness will fall for that and they'll be one of the ones when the door is closed that first those three days of darkness he told me they can come back after those three days and repent but they'd be covered in locust bites and 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 all over their body with the and it, it's not going to be it's it's not something you want to do guys you want to be ready for that time guys that star is going to come down he showed me uh in the dream and my niece was one of the people that hit the floor and and they thought the fire was going to come down and burn them she was like any second now i'll burn up any second now i'll burn up any second now i'll burn up. i was like whoa like i could not believe that i mean it got my attention and it was dark that she fell down and it just frightened her so bad he said there are going to be many people that are just not prepared and she she had a she had bitterness she couldn't forgive she had anger she had pain because of things happened in her childhood and her father you know being an alcoholic she had that pain and but he said there are a lot of people that he loves that have been abused that have pain but their pain if they let it control them it'll lead them back to that darkness you know, one guy was preaching, don't let your pain control you. A lot, a lot of times people were going back to the uh, sins of the world because they're trying to alleviate that pain and that abuse they've had and trying to get some pleasure and trying to alleviate it. But he, but the man was talking in the street preacher that if, if you do that, if you let it control you, that pain will lead you back into that darkness. It will lead you to uh, separation from God eventually. You, you got to... Yeshua talked about casting your burdens, you know, cast your cares upon the Lord for he cares for you. And cast your hurts, you know, cast them toward him, guys, uh, those pains and don't let them control the way you your ministry or the way you're responding because it, it'll destroy your ministry and it'll, it will destroy you, you know. And. I know people don't like this kind of stuff. It's not exactly the popular kind of teaching in the holiness movement, but it's just a mu much a part of everything is the other ones. We we tend to sometimes in the holiness movement have sometimes we can have junk words that that uh it's it's good don't get me wrong, we can get the uh you know we can get dreams or visions or different things but if we're not being challenged in those areas of our weakness to overcome those things like you know the bitterness the anger and and uh and of course adultery and alcoholism and and the sins if we're not being challenged in those areas to give up those things we're just going to get sloppy with things and we need to put the lord's commands first you know he said be holy for i am holy be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect and it's not like in a harsh way he said it but it's a command for your protection he said he who loves me keeps my commandments he who loves me not doesn't keep does not keep my commandments and this is why i said before guys um people would accuse me of not being uh holding up the standards of the lord sometimes because i was showing love but yet when i really got out to certain these things and i started preaching them then it was flipped then it you know you realize that it was the other way around that that i am 
preaching the holiness of the Lord. And I'm not saying, you know, I, I've never in my past sinned or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying, guys. I'm saying that moving forward, Christ calls us to deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow him, you know. But I, but I notice when I get, when I say, okay, you want to uh, drop the love thing for a second. You want to talk about the holiness and stuff. And I get into it and then, you know, less than five minutes in, I learned they're really not into that holiness like they say they're into. And so that's what I mean, guys. Your fear of the Lord and the true holiness will lead you into love with one another and not, not responding out of your flesh when you're angry and it'll lead you to turn away from all those sins it'll lead you to turn away from you know witchcraft and rebellion and anger and and lust and pornography and adultery and i know it's not fun to talk about these kind of topics guys it's not fun sometimes to have to bring these things but when they're in the house of god god says you know you know he he judges his house to put it in order and it's not like to be harsh but it's for you have to have a father if a father told children in the house you could just go ahead and bring guns in here you know to harm my children you know animosity and those things or guns and adultery those things can harm them like a porn magazine or a gun bringing it into the household it can hurt other people it can destroy the family and so he says there's no porn mags allowed in here no masturbation allowed in this house. No, you know, uh, no guns. You know, you're not allowed to have a loaded weapon in here. You can't take it in here. It's going to hurt the kids. You can't do that. When it's the father, you have to live by the father's rules. And it's not like he's being a taskmaster. Like they say again, the way of the Lord is not equal. And they said to Yeshua on that day, one of them said, I knew you were a hard man, Lord. And he said, you know, you wicked servant. He's not saying he's hard but he's just responding to his folly you knew that i was a hard man reaping where i've not strawed gathering reaping where i've not sown gathering where i've not strawed you ought to then have to put my money to the exchangers then at my coming i'd receive my own with usury and he said take the talent from him and give it to him who has two talents you know and you know i'm, I'm being very nice but it said that person was cast into outer darkness that servant and you know, I, I read those things, you know, and I, I, I trembled. And I don't I don't mean that we uh, doubt our salvation or anything like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about fear in the Lord and having respect to him. That it'll, it'll lead you, the, it'll lead you to treat others better and it will lead you to treat the Lord better. And I, I think oftentimes we don't really think about how much pain we cause them when we sin. How much pain we cause others when we're bitter and, and we're angry. We don't think about those things. We're supposed to love God with all our hearts, souls, mind, and strength, you know? Not hurt him, not sin against him like that. And we're supposed to love our neighbors as ourselves. Because I could hear Yeshua when, you know, I went into those sins and, and, and like we try to justify them. And I was asleep and he was crying like he had a great knife in him. And he said, you know... You know, basically, uh, he said, and he was right next to me, Yeshua, and he didn't say it in anger, but he said, I don't, I don't want to have to kill you, Sean. I mean, he said that in a, in a past, in a dream, and people think, no, that's the devil. God could never say that, but he talked about that he does, he did slay the servants, you know, that wouldn't have them reign over him. He talked about that. I think oftentimes we've been taught to see the sweet, side about Yeshua it's all roses with him and if and if he has judgment surely he would never judge us but the the thing is if we're if we confess if we judge ourselves we're not judged if we would you know humble ourselves and say when we sin you know like I said I told you you know you know admit that when we sinned and went away from the Lord we f serve the devil and admit that and repent we will be forgiven but if we make up excuses why, you know, we have the right to do it or whatever, or why, you know, we have the right, we're weakness and, and we're not perfect, then if we make up those kind of excuses, then it's just going to make it worse, guys. He's going to have to judge us because we're not judging ourselves first. But if we judge ourselves, we're not judged, you know. And so, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart. And your neighbor as yourself, guys. 
And if you love God with all your heart, you'll be, you know, listening to his command to be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. And not worry about saying, I can't, I'm, you know, like they, they make per perfection look like a dirty word in the church. They make it look like a filthy word. They make it look like it's unclean and it's uh, God's a taskmaster when he says it. But he's not, guys. You know, he's not a taskmaster when he calls us into the perfection of the Lord. He's just... It's for our own safety, guys. He told one woman when she got to heaven, and she didn't even fully understand it, but he said, all doors to the enemy, Anna, they must be closed. Your, your obedience to me is essential. All doors to the enemy must be closed when you're going out. Every door to the enemy must be shut. It's not easy, you know. He says few will enter into the... You know, few will enter into the heaven, basically. It's a narrow way, guys. Many will seek to enter and not be able to. They'll seek to enter in the narrow way and they'll not be entered. They'll not enter. The reason why is because they're holding on when they're trying to get into that narrow way. They're holding on to bitterness and all these things. And it's like fat on their bodies making them overweight. And it's like you have to have a certain measure, a certain size. I'm not talking about physical. I'm talking about spiritual. And that gate will only fit one person. It won't fit your sin and you. It, it'll fit you, but not your sin and you. And so you have to lay those things down, guys. And and walk with God, you know. And you, and you will be able to get through that gate. But you just can't carry anything else but you. You know what I'm saying? You got to lay down. We, when we came into the world, guys, and we were babes, we didn't have bitterness. We didn't have anger and all that stuff. He wants us to lay it down like when we came into the world as a baby. Lay it down. All the things of the world, as far as the world is concerned, be naked concerning that. Lay down all those things. Material things. Uh, no. You know, the lust and, and all those things, guys. And walk with God. But I love you guys. I'm going to let you go. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I hope you have a really good one. And I'll be praying for you. Until next time. Shalom.